and we know that Jesus Christ uh, believed and walked in in the faith of the Father. And so I'm going to turn it over to uh, to Brother Fred as we get started tonight. Okay. Uh, what we're going to do is to take a fresh look at faith. I know that uh, we all have faith, and we'll talk about that in a moment, but uh, it's good to remind ourselves and, and stir up our uh, memories that uh, we have faith, and, and God wants us to operate in faith, and without faith, it, uh, it's impossible to please God. And so uh, Wendy prayed a, a marvelous prayer for this uh, session. Uh, because her prayer was about faith and all about faith. And that's what the message is about today. And I know that we all have uh, faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. Amen. But uh, I want to start by just simply saying that what you desire matters to God. And he has given you faith so that you can change situations and circumstances. That's what that's the tool that you have, and it's going to change things. And uh, if uh, you need something that isn't here, heaven is going to bring it down to you uh, through your faith. And if something bad has happened in your life, you can reverse it through faith. So mm, faith yeah. is so powerful Amen. and so current, and we need to just be uh, continuing to uh, think about faith and put our faith uh, into action. And and there's a particular verse uh, that's so important to all of us, and that is Romans 8, uh, verse 28, that says, God works all things together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. purpose. He's going to work things out. Uh, and, and so we want to just sit and think, well, uh, everything's just going to work out and I don't have to do anything. Well, but you, we do. We have to apply faith. And without faith, well, it's impossible to, uh, to please God. And so I want you to read that verse, or Romans 8, verse 28, to remind us that God wants good things for you. We know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God to those who are called according to his purpose. Okay, so that's really the core of what we're talking about today. And uh, what I want you to know is that God expects some things of us. And uh, what mm -hmm. he expects is for us to walk in faith and to talk faith and to, uh, to think faith and so about faith. And uh, another verse I want to start with as a core is Psalm 37, verses four and five, and I'll share it. Uh, I'll ask Sherry to read these two verses. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Okay. So, again, we could just look at that and say, oh, whatever we want is going to happen. Well, there are a lot of conditions in those two verses. Yeah. He said, delight yourself in the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And then, then he's going to give you some things. He's going to give you the desires of your heart. So that's what I said at the beginning. He wants the desires that you have. What you want matters to God. And But not only does he give you the desires of the heart, he puts things in your heart and they become your desires. Uh, when mm -hmm. you walk close mm -hmm. to him, uh, well, as we get closer and closer to him, so here we are and we begin to walk closer and closer to God, he, some, he rubs off on us. Hallelujah. And Hallelujah. Uh, what he desires comes into our heart and we begin mm -hmm. to desire mm -hmm. what he wants. And he puts desires in our heart and, and he brings them to pass. So, but how does that happen? Well, he says, delight yourself in the Lord. So uh, there's a responsibility that we have well, we, we need to walk close to him and, and get joy out of being with him. Get joy out of being around him. That's the delighting mm -hmm. yourself mm -hmm. in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. So what you desire matters, but he'll also even change your desires so that elevate them. 
to greater mm -hmm. desires mm -hmm. and give you a greater vision. And then the next verse, verse five says, commit your way. I, I said there's some obligations yeah, here. Yeah. So there's some things that he's expecting us to do. We, we need to commit our ways to him and trust in him. That, that's, that's where faith is right there. Have faith in him, have trust in him and he will give, he will bring it to pass. What, what you're delighting in, what you're desiring, uh, he'll bring it to pass. That, that is so important because what he puts in your heart, you know, before you were born, he put things in your heart. Uh, we see that in uh, Jeremiah when, uh, in the first chapter of Jeremiah, he said, I put things in your heart, Jeremiah, before you were even mm -hmm, born. Mm -hmm. Oh, I knew you and I formed you in your mother's oh, womb. Hallelujah. That, that's true for all of us. He knew all of us. He formed us in the, in our mother's womb and uh, he brings it to pass. He puts those desires, he put them in you before you were born. He put uh, the DNA, he put the genetics in you, he put the desires in you. Now over time, those desires will change, but there were certain things that he put in you before you were born. And it says he's going to bring it to pass. Well, by that, uh, I'm going to say that he gives you faith to bring oh, those things hallelujah, to pass. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He empowers you mm, to mm, bring those things mm, to pass. Mm. So we don't just sit under a tree uh, and hope that an apple falls on us uh, as far as the desires of our heart. He's given some very specific instructions here that we need to delight in him. We need to commit our way to him. We need to put our faith in him and he empowers us. And part of that empowerment is our faith. And uh, so that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. It's a fresh look at faith. And this is the thing I want you to take from this message tonight. Uh, I always like to, to give an overview of, of what we're going to be doing. And I want you to know that in the supernatural realm, faith connects events. Uh, and mm, the, mm. the events that are around you may seem random. They may seem just uh, uh, this is happening and then that's happening and this happening and that happening. Well, it, when you have faith, you begin to see how things are connected. Ooh, and that's hallelujah. the fresh look at faith that we're going to have today. That's, mm, a, that's mm. really a, a fundamental understanding that we need to know that when our faith operates, we know how to pray, then we pray, and then this thing happens over here. Well, it's connected because of our faith. Mm -hmm. Because we prayed, then this thing happened. That's what we were asking for, and it happened. And so it's the faith is the glue that holds events together. Otherwise, we think we're just in the, in the, kind of like a pinball machine where things are just happening all the way and, and we don't have any control over things. We don't have any uh, input or uh, decision about what to do because we don't know. We don't know what's going to happen when we get up. See, if people without faith, and this is where they get hopeless and where they get oppressed and depressed because when they have no hope and they, they don't have their faith in the Lord Jesus mm -hmm. Christ, they think that all of these events are random and they don't know how to control anything or to change anything. But the Lord has given us faith. Hallelujah. And our faith, see, with our faith, we can do so many things. And I said to begin with that uh, if, if we need something and it's not here, heaven will bring it to mm -hmm. us. Or some bad thing may have happened and we can change things. We are in charge of a life worth living. Amen. That's what I want you to know. Amen. Amen. We're going to see that in the scripture in a moment. But you have been given a life worth, worth living. living. And it's faith that makes that happen. That you can have a life that you, they're full of joy, a life uh, full of satisfaction and mm -hmm. contentment and, mm -hmm. and trusting in the Lord. That's the kind of life that's worth living. Now, if uh, events you think are just chaotic and out of control, uh, then you probably need to get a helmet on because you may get struck 
uh, by something. But I want you to know that no, as a child of God, as, as one of his sons and daughters, he wants to put you in charge. You know, Jesus said, all authority in heaven and earth mm -hmm. is given unto me, Hallelujah. and I'm going to delegate it to you. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And the way we operate in it is with faith. And the thing about faith is, is you didn't start with a zero level of faith. Mm -hmm. uh, he gives you faith. Ooh, glory to God. Hallelujah. So I can easily say all of you have faith because God gives you faith. Otherwise, you couldn't you wouldn't be, be saved. You wouldn't be saved. You wouldn't be a believer. You wouldn't be here tonight. So he has given you the faith. That's how gracious and extravagant our God is. He has given all of us faith. I want you to read this. Mm -hmm. This is in uh, uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 3. So we're starting from the fact that he gives us faith. So he's empowering us to receive the desires of our heart. Oh, hallelujah. Okay. Romans 12, 3. God has allotted to each one of us a measure of faith. Okay. So it didn't say it's the one and only faith. It's a measure. Mm. Now that means you can increase your faith. Yeah, hallelujah. Uh, you know, at times Jesus said his disciples had no faith, and then he said, well, they have a, a little, little faith. faith. Uh, but there were some people that had great, great faith. faith. So what what I'm expecting and hoping for all of us is that we get to that point where we have, we have great, great faith. faith. That's what I want. Oh, well, that's your potential. You have the potential to have great faith, and that's what he wants you to have. We all start with the same amount, and otherwise we couldn't be born again, but he wants us to let that faith mm -hmm. grow. And the way you get it to grow is to hear the word of God. You begin to to uh, hear the word and, and build a relationship with him so that he's speaking to you and that's going to cause your faith to grow. And so as you get closer and to closer to the Lord, you begin to hear his voice. You begin to, your faith begins to grow. You act on your faith mm. and it grows more and more. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Even to the point where you can have great faith. Now, don't you want to astonish Jesus? That's what the centurion did. Jesus was astonished <laughs> with how much faith that centurion had. He said, I'm a man under Wonderful authority. authority. I know how authority works. And, and we all should be able to uh, repeat what the centurion did. We, we should know uh, about authority. All, Jesus has all authority in heaven and earth, and he delegates it to his the disciples, to his believers, hallelujah. to his children, to his brothers and sisters. Mm, okay, mm, hallelujah. Mm. Uh, but I wanted to look at a couple of different verses about what faith is. We know that faith is defined in Hebrews 11, 1. But remember, tonight we're taking a fresh, fresh look, look at faith. And so I want to look at it from a couple of different translations. Why don't you tell us what these Translations are here. Okay. Read these. Uh, I'm reading from the the Passion uh, translation, Hebrews 11:1. 1. Now faith brings our hopes into reality. Reality. I want you to see that word right there. Mm, that's I love a that. really important thing. And and so that's the reality that connects events. And, and so you can pray over here, and, and you will know for a certainty that you're going to get the result that you prayed for. Mm, mm. Okay, go ahead and read again. And becomes the foundation needed to acquire the things we long for. Oh, well, that's what that's the way I started. Hallelujah. See, God wants to give you what you long for. Ooh, How do you get the Lord. it? Out of faith. So it comes through faith. Okay, go ahead. It is all the evidence required to prove what is still unseen. Okay. So mm. now to people in the world, to unbelievers, they see an event, let's say A, and then they see another event, B. Uh, for example, A may be a prayer, a prayer that you pray. That's A. And then you get the result of that prayer. Now the unbelievers will, they don't recognize the connection, mm. but mm. it's the faith and you have faith. And so when you pray, 
you believe you're going to get the result that you prayed for. And faith connects them together. But the unbelievers, they'd say, well, you, you prayed over there and then this thing happened, but we don't know why it happened. <laughs> because they're unbelievers. Mm -hmm. But believers know when you pray, you get the results. Okay? Hallelujah. Okay, Hallelujah. so let's read it from another translation. Okay, Hebrews 11, verse 1, out of the message translation. The fundamental fact of existence is that this trust in God, this faith, is the firm foundation under everything that makes life worth living. Woohoo! Did you hear that? Life, life worth, worth living. living. It comes out of faith. That's the fundamental concept. Yes, I mean. Faith makes life, life worth, worth living. living. And you might think, oh, I'm just so under so much pressure, under so much stress, and 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 I'm just running, 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 and, and never having any rest and never having any relief. I've just got to keep running and, and, and just to keep up. Well, where's your faith? Mm. See, if you have faith, you will have a life, life worth, worth living. living. Oh, mm. hallelujah. I love that. So, yeah. I'm so excited about that definition. Okay, go ahead. It's our handle on what we cannot see. The act of faith is what distinguished our ancestors and set them apart above the crowd. Ooh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Abraham, see, is the father, father of, of our faith. faith. And that put him above other people. There were there were people, uh, let's say in Sodom and Gomorrah, they didn't know what was going to happen. But God, but God revealed to Adam and Eve uh, to, to Abraham what was going to happen in Sodom and Gomorrah. But Abraham was close enough to God that he could negotiate with him. He could talk to him, and he said, "Oh, oh, let's find a few righteous people there and let's save the city." So. Uh, don't you want a relationship like that? Well, that's our ancestor. He's the father of mm, our, our faith. faith. And we'll talk more about him in a minute. Okay. Okay. Did we finish that verse then? We did. Oh, man. A living, a life. Set above, above the crowd. Oh, hallelujah. That's, that's where you came from. Now, don't think you came from a little bitty organism and you evolved over time. Uh, the, you just came out of an organism. Or an ape swinging from tree to tree. But don't think that. You've got ancestors Sisters. that lived by faith. faith. Amen. Woo -hoo -hoo. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's exciting. We, we have uh, ancestors who live by faith, and that made them different than the rest of the world. I mean, and, and, that, and your descendants will say the same thing about mm -hmm. you. It was your faith that set you apart and distinguished you from all of the crowd uh, that's milling around because they don't have faith, but you Hallelujah. have faith, and that puts you above the crowd. Amen. Ooh, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and, and it wasn't because of what you did. It wasn't because you did great things. God gave you faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it's what you do then with your faith. So God started us all out at the same place. He gave us faith. We accepted Jesus. And now as we get closer and closer to Jesus, and I believe that's what Wendy was talking about uh, in her prayer, uh, as we just begin to love the Lord and get mm -hmm. close to him, mm -hmm. then our faith is going to grow. Hallelujah. This is just a fresh look at faith. Uh, to, I want to encourage you tonight Amen. to move and operate in faith and expect great things to happen. Hallelujah. Because our God cares about you. He cares about what you desire. Oh, it does. It, it matters to him what you desire. He wants you to have it. And the way you get it is with faith. I mean, he works all things out to your good. And you might say, well, something bad happened to me. Well, he'll work it out to your good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you love him and are called according to his purpose. So that, that's, we can all do that. We can love God. And we know that we're here on this earth for a purpose. And so we just follow our purpose and all he's going to work things out, but he's going to empower you so that the things will work out. Oh, hallelujah, because he wants to give you the desires of your heart. Now, not only does he give you faith, 
I want you to know that he also gives you love. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, yeah. This is really important. Uh, let's start with Romans 5, 5. And hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who he has given unto us. Okay, where do you get love? From the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, because love, see, there are two different kinds of love or maybe lots of different kinds of love, but basically the world has a type of love and it's a selfish kind of love. But God has a love and it's an unconditional and it's unselfish. And, and it it desires for other people to to prosper and Amen. benefit. Amen. And Amen. so God's love is a different love than the love of the world uh, because the world has a selfish love, wants what they want and they want to, and, and they don't care so much about what other people. Now, the, even a natural people, a natural mother and a natural father, of course, will love their children, but it's still a selfish, it's still a selfish love. See, God so loved the world that he gave his only, only begotten, begotten son. son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's an un that is the definition of unselfish love, Amen. that you would Amen. give your very best, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, for the world. The world hated God. Even mm. when he gave his son, Jesus Christ, the world hated God, but God so loved the world. He gave the best he had. He offered his son, Jesus Christ, Hallelujah. on the cross. Hallelujah. That is unselfish love. That's unconditional love. And that is not the kind of love that the world has. The world may say they have love, but it's not God's love. Mm. And see, what we found out, uh, and this was years ago, that uh, we thought we loved people. Uh, because mm -hmm. we love to go to church and we love to be around God's people and we love people. But what we really turned it, what we really found out was we love people that were like us. Uh, and uh, when we went out on the streets and started ministering to the people that were homeless and alcoholics and drug addicts, God gave us a greater love. He yes, gave he us is. his love. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. We, we didn't earn it. That's we, right. We didn't work for it. We just simply opened our heart and by his spirit, yeah, he, he poured, poured it, it into, us. into us. And that's why we have his love because he gave us love. Isn't that wonderful? Through the Holy Spirit. It's through the Holy Spirit. The more Holy Spirit you have, the more, more love. Of love is of his love you mm -hmm. have, of God's mm -hmm. love, the, the love that is unselfish, Hallelujah. unconditional. You you can love people who, who will spit on you and, and pull your beard out. See, Jesus did. He loved people who... Or smoke crack cocaine in your bathroom. Jesus pulled... <laughs> uh, there were people that pulled his beard out. They beat him on the back. Mm -hmm. They they uh, uh, pierced him uh, through his hands and through his side. They they beat him in their, uh, with their fist on his... Uh, on his face, and he still loved them. Oh, hallelujah! Uh, that's just beyond yeah, the beyond, natural mind. Yeah, yeah, he still loved them. He was willing to give mm, his life mm, mm. for them, even though they did treated him in such a terrible, horrific mm -hmm, uh, way. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, a lot of people would say, "Well, I love, I love God," but you know, First John says we also have, need to love people. Yeah. Listen to this. First John four twenty. If someone says, I love God, yet he hates his brother or sister, he is a liar. For the one who does not love his brother and sister, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he cannot see. Oh, hallelujah. So people can say, oh, I love God. I love God. I love God. But the, the real test, whether or not you love mm -hmm. God, is, is if you love people. Unconditionally. Yeah, amen. Uh, people are going to do terrible things. Well, worldly people are going to do terrible right. things to you. They're going to do terrible things to one another. But can you still love them? That's God's love. He still loves them, regardless of how evil they are, how how uh, terrible they their actions are. He still loves them, and we need to love with the love of God. 
and that is only possible mm. by his Holy Spirit because his Holy Spirit pours his love into us. Now, this is very important because I want you to see in this next point I want to make is that your faith only works when you have love. Oh, mm -hmm. but you might say, "Oh, well, I don't love that person. I don't love that person." I don't. Well, you te that tells me right here that your faith is not effective because mm -hmm. your faith will mm -hmm. only be effective if you love with God's unconditional, unselfish love. Mm -hmm. and, and I want to share to read Galatians uh, uh, five or six. And I think I've got a couple of translations here. So let's read these two. Okay. It says, when you're joined to the anointed one. Remember, we're talking about making connections here also tonight. That uh, things that are related. It says, when we're joined to the anointed one, which is Christ Jesus, circumcision and religious obligations benefit you nothing. Woo -hoo -hoo. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did, did you hear that? I, mm -hmm. we, maybe we need to pause here yeah. and, and think about that for a moment. It says religion, religious obligations. You know, religion. Mm -hmm. What, what mm -hmm. is religion anyway? Well, it's a form, form of, of godliness, godliness, but it denies the, the power, power of, of the God. And, and so that's what religion is, but it puts people under bondage mm, oh, it puts burdens on put, them bur puts burden on you've got to come to the services every time the doors open you you've got to bring your money in here because we've got to pay the pastor and we've got to uh keep the lights on we've got to build bigger buildings and that, that puts obligations on you and that puts burdens on you and that's what religion does, it does. okay go ahead and read this first all that matters now is living in the faith Oh, 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 wait, wait a minute. This is just too good. Mm -hmm. I, 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 we need to say that the only thing that matters is by living right. in, with faith. Okay, mm -hmm. go ahead. In the faith that works or is energized, and that word in the Greek is energio, and expresses itself through love. Oh, hallelujah. Faith is not good without love. It's the love mm -hmm. that gives it the energy to work. Ooh, hallelujah. So you got to tie hallelujah. those two things together. You, They're you connected. To love, you have to love like God loves, unconditionally, unselfishly, and, and then your faith will work. Hallelujah. But there's a hallelujah. lot of people that, that uh, they they love people like them, but they put put their uh, nose up and, and they shun other people. Because they they don't vote the right way, or they don't have the right color, or they don't speak the right language, uh, but but it doesn't matter. See, if you are a child of God and He has put His love in you, you're going to love all people unconditionally, Amen. unselfishly. Amen. Oh, hallelujah! They may not speak like you, they may not uh, uh, look like you, but. For your faith to work, you're going to have to love them anyway. Amen. And out of the voice uh, translation. So this is the second translation. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. In Jesus, the anointed one, whether you are circumcised or not, it makes no difference. What makes a difference is faith that is energized by love. Oh, the only thing, thing that, that matters, the oh, only thing that makes a difference. And I told you, you can make a difference with your situations and circumstances. You can change them. But the only thing that's going to make a difference is what? Read it again. Is faith that's energized by love. Faith that's energized by love. So you have to have both faith and love. Now, if you have faith and love, then you can see how events are connected. You pray, you get the result. And uh, mm -hmm. you may pray for somebody, you lay hands on them, they'll be healed. That's faith. See, faith will connect those mm -hmm. events. Mm -hmm. You lay hands on the sick, they'll recover. That That's from uh, Mark chapter 16. Amen. And so it's the faith that connects them. There's so many people that are running around and, and, and they... The, their prayers are not being answered and the, they don't know why. Well, let me tell you, it's right here. Mm -hmm. you, they're not living in love and in faith. Mm -hmm. If they have their faith energized by love, their prayers will be answered 
Or they can lay hands on the sick and they'll see them recover. Hallelujah. They can declare a thing and it will be established. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, I, I'm bringing this uh, message to uh, an end. And uh, I, I want to talk about Abraham for a minute. Abraham saw how things were connected in the supernatural realm. And he's the father of our faith. He knew how <laughs> things worked how things were connected. Oh, that's important. He's our forefather. He's our father of our faith. We need to recognize like Abraham. And the really the passage I want to get to, and we're not going to read all of it, but in Genesis 22, God told him to go uh, sacrifice Isaac. Oh, hallelujah. This is where his hopes are. In Genesis 21, he said, your descendants are going to come through Isaac. Right, right. They're going to come through Isaac. They're no, not going to come through anybody else. But now in 22, Genesis 22, he says, I want you to sacrifice Isaac. But that's where I've made all of these promises to you. You're going to have all these descendants. They're going to be like the stars of the sky mm -hmm. and the sand uh, on the seashore. Uh, you're going to have all of these things. And it's all going to come through Isaac. And now in Genesis 22, he says, I want you to sacrifice Isaac. Hallelujah. And what that means is I want you to cut him up, kill him, uh, put him on the wood and burn him up. Mm, uh, burn sacrifice. Mm, that, mm. That's what God was implying here. I want you to sacrifice. Okay, but see, this didn't frighten Abraham. This is our forefather. Mm -hmm. This is the father. Of, this, didn't, this didn't worry him. Because he had enough trust in God. He saw how things were connected. And this was not a trivial thing. This was not a low thing that God was asking him. But, but Abraham went right along with God. And so he got some servants together and he got the wood and he got the fire and he got the knife. And so they went over there and they, he didn't even know where he was going. But he trusted God. He was so close to God that... Uh, uh, he, he went so far and then he told the servants, so you just wait here. And this is the, uh, there are two basic points I want to make in this passage. And, and the first one was, he said, this, Isaac and I are going to go over there and we're going to worship God. We're going to go over that mountain. Mm -hmm. we're and, gonna we're gonna, worship. and we're going to worship God. Now listen to that. We're going to worship God and then we're going to come back. And but we are going to come back. We're going to come back. So, he saw how things were connected. That's what I really want you to see. He saw how things were connected. And we all, if we have faith and operate in faith and love, we can see how things are connected. And while what we do will cause other things to happen. Okay? And so he, he goes over there. And, and those were really important words. He said, we are going to go over there and mm -hmm. we are, we are going, to come, going to come back. We're going to go worship the Lord and we are going to come back. Okay, but God said, you're going to kill him. You're going to sacrifice him. So he gets over on the mountain and, and Isaac uh, says, well, I see the fire. I see the wood. Uh, I, I see the knife. I, I see the knife. But boy, where is the, the sacrifice. sacrifice? And listen to what Abraham, he said. He said, uh, mm -hmm. God will provide himself a sacrifice. See, he saw, mm -hmm. he saw how things were connected. He knew that he had to follow and obey what God was saying, but, but then there's going to be something greater happen because he's going to do something. Hell yeah. He saw how things were connected. Amen. Now, he Amen. gets up there. And, and, you know, Isaac went along with this, too. Isaac went along with yeah, it. Yeah, it says, that, And Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac, and he took his hand in the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. <laughs> Isaac was in agreement with it. And Isaac spoke to his father, and he said, My father, here I am. Uh, Abraham says, here I am, my son. And he said, look, here's the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the sacrifice? And Abraham said, God will, now listen to this, God will provide for himself 
the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What faith he has. That's our forefather. That's the father Hallelujah. of our faith. We can talk like Abraham. We can act like Abraham. We can apply our faith like him. He saw how things were connected. He knew he had to be obedient to God uh, because there's something bigger in the future that's going to happen as a result. Hallelujah. Of that. Hallelujah. What was going to happen? It was that God was going to offer his son, Jesus Christ, Amen. on the cross because Abraham had done this back there. Hallelujah. He had not even withheld his son, Isaac. And, and Isaac was the one that the descendants were going to come through. But the thing about Abraham, and we see this in Hebrews 11, uh, and that is Abraham knew that if he sacrificed Isaac right there, that God would raise, raise him, him up, up again, even, even from the dead. That's from Hebrews 11. Hallelujah. That is Hallelujah. Isn't that Hallelujah. You can take it also your... says in, in the New Testament that Abraham saw Jesus's day and rejoiced. Hallelujah. So Abraham saw how things were connected. And that's the whole point of this message today. You need to see how things are connected. Now, I want you to read Isaiah. And then we see Isaiah began to prophesy. He, he saw into the future. He saw that Jesus was going to be the sacrificial lamb. So read Isaiah, Isaiah 53, 7. 7. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that is silent before its shearers, so he did not open his mouth. So, okay, so Isaac saw it in the spiritual realm. See, we have to see Isaiah. how Isaiah did. We have to see, no, no, we have to see how things are connected in the spiritual realm. Isaiah, Isaiah saw it. Okay, but now I want to, when Jesus was up on the cross, his disciples really didn't even know what was happening. But then, Later on, the Holy Spirit revealed to them what had happened. And now Peter wrote about and said, oh, he was the sacrificial lamb. So read this from first, Peter. First Peter chapter 1, verses 18 and 19. Knowing that you were not redeemed with perishable things like silver or gold from your futile way of life inherited from your forefathers, but with the precious blood as of a lamb, unblemished and spotless, the blood of Christ. See, Peter didn't know that when he was at the cross, when he was looking at Jesus on the cross, but he knew it and it was revealed to him by the Holy Spirit. Okay, so my last point then was that Abraham had great faith. And he saw things that were connected in the supernatural realm even before they happened. And, and uh, it, it took uh, Peter a while to get it, but he finally got it. Amen. And we can be like our father Abraham and see how things are connected. Hallelujah. And by that, I mean, when we pray, we should expect results. And that's what Sherry and I have been doing for years and years. We have been praying and we've been getting results. And, and if you're praying and not getting results and you think things are just random and things may or, or, may chaos. Not happen, or your whole life is chaotic. Well, you, you need to build your faith and then you'll begin to see God is answering your prayers. God is doing just exactly what he promised he would do. Amen. Abraham got to that point where he could even offer his son, his, yes. uh, the only one that his descendants could come through were Isaac. And, but he could offer him uh, and kill him and uh, let him be a burnt sacrifice uh, there on the mountain because he had enough trust in God that he would raise him from the ashes. Who do you Hallelujah. have that kind of faith? Hallelujah. That's your father. Your forefather has that. That's Abraham. Uh, we can have his faith. We can Let's have that walk faith. Amen. in the steps of Abraham. Let's begin to see things, how they are connected even before they exist. Oh, hallelujah. That's, hallelujah. The, way with, that's the way with Abraham. He knew God was going to provide a sacrifice, his own sacrifice. He knew that. How he could see it. See, uh, on the other side of the cross before the cross actually happened. Now, we sure, surely should realize 
that there was a connection between what Abraham did and Isaac did and what Jesus did on the cross. We need to see those connections, but we need to be like Abraham and see things yet undone uh, that haven't come to pass yet. We see they're connected. We need to know what we need to do in faith to uh, bring things out of the supernatural realm and have them manifested in the natural realm where we are. Uh, this message is a simple yes, message. Amen. It's just to encourage you to live in faith, to operate in faith. You'll be pleasing God. You'll be bringing things out of the supernatural realm, bringing things from heaven and having them manifest on the earth. You'll be making changes in people's lives. You won't be uh, just walking around in chaos. You can change your situation and the situation of other people. You are a mighty warrior for our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for being here.